So hey everyone, uh, my name is Pat Harrison. I'm a solution architect at Red Hat and I'm focused uh, on uh, the Ansible automation platform in my role. And today's session, we're gonna look at developing Ansible content. I'm really looking at three things. So, uh, you know, a few best practices, general best practices around Ansible. Uh, we'll then look at how you can develop Ansible roles. And specifically, we'll be looking at things like Molecule for, for Ansible role development and, and how we can hook that into our CI process. And then the final section is, you know, when we get to the point where we want to test um, our playbooks, and ultimately we want to test those playbooks work in Ansible Tower, you know, how can we do that? What are some of the techniques we can use to, again, drive that through our, our, our CI, CD tooling so that we are um, ensuring we test all of this stuff as part of our development process? So apologies before we start. I'm full of cold. I'm very snotty, um, so my voice is fairly more nasally than usual. Um, but let's let's get going. Then we'll look at best practices. Um, just a few light best practices here. I, you know, some of this stuff will be common sense to you. So, the first thing is treat your Ansible content like it's code. So, uh, you know, like I say, this is probably common sense to most people. To you know, in the world of infrastructure as code, but Ansible's you know, we're writing YAML basically, YAML files with Ansible. So that lends itself really well to being stored in a version control system like Git, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, whatever it might be that you use. And so as a best practice for Ansible, we, we, we recommend store all of your Ansible playbooks, your Ansible roles, your Ansible variables, all of that stuff, version all of that stuff in, in source control. And that allows you then to, 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 to take all of the benefits of those source control systems. You know, you're gonna have the full history there of all of the commits that have taken place, all of the changes to that, that Ansible content. You're gonna be able to then, you know, develop off feature branches, development branches, without breaking things that are in production. You'll be able to do things like peer reviews and make sure that, you know, people are validating what you're writing. Have you been, have you tested it? Where did you test it? Were the tests successful? So it just gives you, you know, using all of those development practices, provides us with huge benefits here when we're, when we're talking about Ansible. And then the, the other thing you'll want to do is come up with some standards, some best practices for writing and developing Ansible content. Now, some of these things uh, there's tooling to help with and we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. Other things will be kind of, you know, organization specific standards that you'll want to write and maintain. But we're, but we're talking about things like, you know, naming every task playbook that we're, we're writing so that it forms part of that documentation. Using best practices for directory layouts, for roles, playbooks. Making sure we've got naming standards for things like roles, naming standards for things like variables so they're not gonna clash with other with other teams writing things. So like I say, there's some tooling that will help us with this um, and we'll look at that. And then there's also some stuff that you'll wanna put in place here around best practices and documenting how people should be writing Ansible content. And then on that theme of, of source control, you know, and everything with Ansible, start simple, you know, start simple with Ansible. Use one Git repository to, to start with. That's that's absolutely fine. So have a Git repository with your playbooks and all your roles in there, that's great. What you'll probably find as you, you know, go down the road with Ansible and, and like everything with Ansible, as you iterate and learn, and, and there's no such thing as best practice because we're, we're always learning and things are always changing, but you probably will end up in a position where you'll want multiple Git repositories specifically a Git repository per Ansible role that you're developing, um, especially when you start looking at things like CI and wanting to be able to test your Ansible roles as you develop them. It lends itself really well to having a single repository. It's the model that Ansible Galaxy has been following for, for years where, you know, each Git repository is, is there for each role. And so we're going to look at how we're going to CI test our Ansible roles. Um, but yeah, that, that's probably a place that you'll, you'll eventually want to get to. And then the final thing is just to think about, you know, how you're going to develop this stuff. What what are the, what are the what are the practices? How are you going to do code reviews? Are you going to use branches and and you know are you going to use pull requests or merge requests? You know, are you going to have a production branch where you pull all your stuff from to run in production, and then feature branches and test branches for for for, for other pieces of code that you're writing? So just think about this. You know, this is an example here, which is pretty sane, um, nice and simple. But just think about how you're going to develop code, how you're going to introduce new code into production. I'm going to be doing something very simple with a kind of production branch, and then I'm going to create a feature branch and, and merge that in. 
but just again have a think about that how, how you're already you may already have standards for how you're doing this today so uh, it's, it's well worth thinking about your source control kind of strategy so let's look at developing roles with Ansible and so an Ansible role just to recap on what Ansible role is if, if you're new to them an Ansible role is, is really a, a self-contained unit of Ansible automation so we're able to encapsulate a function basically within an Ansible role so so let's say um, I want to do VM provisioning on something like VMware I could create an Ansible role which is a self-contained unit of automation which has got everything it needs in it to create a VM on VMware and it then becomes this reusable piece of automation which others can consume just by calling that role so this is the whole point of roles break away playbooks from huge monoliths into these smaller functions and each of these roles having a very clear defined purpose basically like I said VM provisioning or you know configuring NTP and then being able to then um, share these roles and you know, reconsume them so that I don't need every team to write their own NTP role I don't need every team to write their own piece of automation for VMware I can produce this catalog of, of Ansible capabilities in the way that we do with Ansible Galaxy and say look if you want to do VM provisioning just consume my role that's all I need to do and what we're trying to drive towards with our Ansible role development and, and everything we're doing here is committing quality code so that we find out early on you know what it is we, we're writing is it successful and then having that full visibility you know in our CI and source control so that when I say look I've written this new role can you peer review it someone doesn't have to jump through hoops and find out okay where did you test it where are the logs for it if I can bake all of this into my CI process so that I can say look Here's, here's my code, here's the reasons I've done it. It's on this branch, and here's the, the output of my testing. It's gonna make life much easier for, for us as we start to, to scale this and start to validate each other's code. And what we're, we're avoiding is this guy here who just has no idea what he's doing. All he wants to do is make a simple change, and it's five commits to, to get to a good place by the end of which he's, he's pretty much given up. So we talked about best practices earlier and trying to enforce best practices and we said it's kind of a combination of um, you know there are default you know well-known Ansible best practices and then there's going to be organizational specific best practices that you'll want to enforce so what we can help with is is it's certainly the first part of this where it's the kind of well understood Ansible best practices using a tool called Ansible Lint so Ansible Lint is a command line tool for for checking your playbooks and your roles meet best practices basically so things like all of my tasks are named am i using the shell module a lot they're the kind of things ansible lint will test out of the box and validate and make sure that you're following those best practices and then when you have your organizational specific um, best practices you can extend ansible lint and write your own custom rules if you want to but ansible lint because it's command line driven lends itself really well to being used as part of your ci uh, process uh, I'll be using Ansible Lint today in conjunction with another tool, um, but yeah, it's a very useful tool. And, and as it says at the bottom here, just a disclaimer, it's not part of the Ansible automation platform, not part of your subscription. Ansible Lint's community software today. So the other tool that I'm going to use is Molecule. So Molecule is, is awesome. It um, provides a framework for developing and testing Ansible roles. And what it does is it spins up test infrastructure, test instances for us to then write and test our roles against so if we think again about the kind of ntp role example where i want to write an ntp role if i really wanted to do that you know without something like molecule i would have to provision some test instances maybe i've got to make sure it works against rel 7 and 8 and centos and you know some other uh, variant of, of linux so i'm then responsible for spinning up all of this infrastructure then testing my role against it and then spinning down all this infrastructure when I'm finished with it or cleaning it all up when I'm finished with it. So Molecule does all of this for us. It, it very simply can spin up test infrastructure, test our role against it, make sure we've got a, a, a place to develop roles as well, and then tear down that infrastructure when we finish with it. And again, same as Ansible Lint, it's community software today, not, not part of the Ansible automation platform. So how do we install Molecule? Well, very simply, and Ansible Lint. We, pip install it so pip install molecule pip install ansible lint 
And then there are additional drivers like we can see here, the Podman molecule driver, and I'll come on to the drivers in a moment. But again, it's really simple to install molecule. You'll probably want to do all of this in a Python virtual environment, so you've got it all self-contained. But yeah, it's a very simple uh, installation process. And I mentioned those molecule drivers. So when we talk about molecule spinning up test instances, there's a number of ways it can do it. So there's driver there to spin up Docker containers and use those as our test infrastructure for testing our roles against. We can use Podman, that's what I'm going to be using today to create test instances. So Podman's kind of a, a, a you know, a drop-in replacement for Docker. It's the direction Red Hat's going, you know, RHEL 8 uses Podman. There's no Docker in RHEL 8 anymore. So Podman's what I'm going to be using today. But the, the really cool one is the delegated driver. So the delegated driver basically um, allows you to use any of the Ansible modules that exist out in the ecosystem to spin up infrastructure. So let's say you wanted to test something against an F5 load balancer. Well, you might want to use, you know, an AWS F5 virtual instance or a, a virtual instance on your VMware platform. You can use any of the Ansible modules uh, and basically write your own playbook to spin up that test infrastructure for you. So it's really cool. Basically, you've got all of the flexibility of Ansible, all of the cloud modules to spin up test infrastructure, test and develop your roles against it, and then tear it down. So the delegated driver is really useful to extend what Molecule can do out of the box. And then as we're developing and, and, and testing our Ansible roles, Molecule has a number of phases. And we're going to go through all of these phases, and we're going to um, uh, look at how they will work. And we're going to we're going to step through this process in, in a moment when I jump into the command line. But I just want to cover off these 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 molecule phases. So we've got um, the create phase will create our test instances. So if I've got, you know, Docker containers, create will spin up those Docker containers. The converge phase will test my role against those instances. So my NTP role or whatever will test them. There's a linting phase, which will run something like Ansible lint, make sure I'm following the best practices. There's a verify phase, which allows me to write tests. So like in almost unit tests of, you know, you said you're going to configure NTP. Is my time synced? Am I talking to the right servers? Whatever it might be. That's the kind of thing we can write with verify. The idempotence test is making sure that, you know, our role is idempotent. So it's not changing things unless it needs to. And then the test phase is a full suite of testing. So basically all of these stages, create, converge, lint, verify, idempotence, and a whole bunch more that it runs. And that's really useful for our CI process because we can just call molecule test and it will run a full suite of tests against our Ansible roles. So with that in mind, let's jump onto the command line. Let me make this ever so slightly bigger. And we'll step through this molecule process then and look at molecule, see how we can use it in conjunction with lint to develop our Ansible roles. So um, I'm going to use uh, molecule to initialize a new role. So I'm going to call it Apache and I'm going to use the, uh, the Podman driver, like I said. So we're telling molecule to use Podman. So we're using the molecule init um, command here to initialize a new role. And we can see it's initialized a new role called um, uh, Apache. So if I says now cd into the Apache directory and run tree, we'll see that Molecule has basically created all the, the role scaffolding that we need. So we talked about best practices for directory structures. Molecule's doing that for us here. Same, same thing that Ansible Galaxy in it would, would do. Creates us our best practice directory structure for our Ansible role. And the extra thing it's doing here is it's creating this Molecule um, directory with some, some files in there, which... Um, uh, which tell Molecule how to behave, how to, what should it spin up as test infrastructure, how should it destroy test infrastructure, what tests should it run. So this is exactly what Molecule there is, 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 is initializing for us. So let me just spin up another terminal here. So let's go and have a look in this Molecule directory. And we're looking at the Molecule.yaml file here. So this is basically Molecule's configuration file. And we can see out of the box, because I told it to use Podman, it's pulling in this CentOS 8 container image. So basically, if I run a, a molecule create here, it's going to spin up a CentOS 8 um, uh, Docker container, basically, container image for me. So what I want to do is I'm just going to change this. I want to use um, 
uh, rel instances for mine, obviously, uh, as part of a Red Hat talk. But I'm going to use rel uh, universal base images. So let me just copy and paste some text in here. So this is the image that I want to use now, and I'm going to walk us through all of this. So let me delete this Docker image, and let me walk you through what we've done here. So I'm now telling it to create an instance called rel8 using this um, container image here. The UBI is universal base image. So this is a rel8 um, container. It's an init based container because I'm going to develop an Apache role. I need to run system CTL commands. I need I need to interact with system D in it. So I'm, I'm using this UBI init container. And, and this stuff here, you know, this is just don't worry about this. This this documented on the Monaco website. This is basically the, the additional stuff you need to run to, to give this container some additional privileges so that we can actually interact with within it. So these are just some additional um, um, settings we need. Like I say, they're fully documented on the Molecule site. I've just copied and pasted these in. Now, so that's our RHEL 8 definition. I'm also doing a RHEL 7 definition here because I want to make sure my role works against a couple of different um, uh, distributions here. So. I've got my RHEL 7 um, instance, which is using the universal base image for RHEL 7 and all of the same, all of the same uh, privileged stuff at the end there. And then the only other section I'm adding here at the bottom is a linting section. So I'm basically saying, uh, if I do a molecule lint, use Ansible lint, because that's what I want to use to, to, to validate my best practices. So that's my basic uh, molecule um, definition. And so what we should be able to do now is use a molecule create to spin up those um, container images. So it should go and create those instances for us, wait for them to come online. And we sh that should then give us our development uh, environment basically for, for, for testing the uh, and developing our role. So it says here our instances have been created. I can now do a molecule list and it's telling me I've got a rel7 instance and a rel8 instance. These were the names that I provided. They've both been created, created is set to true. So that's now giving me a, a development environment basically to work from. And now what I can do is actually, you know, what I, what I started off doing here is I can start to create my role. So I'm just gonna create a really basic um, Ansible role here. I'm just gonna paste this from another terminal because I don't wanna, don't want you to sit here and watch me write this. So we can see here I've got a, um, a really simple Ansible role to install Apache, start and enable the service, and then write out a basic index.html that says molecule, molecule is great. So let's save that. So we've now got our our, our role that we've, we've created. I can run the converge stage now. So the converge stage is basically gonna test this role against my test infrastructure. So here it goes, it's it's connecting into those instances, gathered the facts, and it's now in running through that, that role. So it's installing Apache, it's gonna manage the services, it's gonna write our, our, our content. So it's running through, starting to enable the service, and then we should hopefully see our index.html is written. So that looks good, I'm happy with that, I've got no errors. Now, there are other stages to Molecule, and so at this point I might want to run the item potence um, uh, stage and make sure that you know it's not making unnecessary changes each time I run it. I want it to make sure it only makes changes when it needs to. So what we should hopefully see now is it runs through and doesn't make any changes. And Molecule's going to error if it does make a change. So we're happy with that. Pride and potence check has come back successfully and, are, are done, and we're not making any additional changes here that we don't need to. So that's a really simple thing, right? We've run three commands, one to create test infrastructure, two to, to test our role against it, and three to make sure our role's item potent. Now there's a whole bunch of other stuff we can do with Molecule. So if I go back and look at this list of Molecule instances, I can actually log into one of these instances and um, and take a look at, you know, troubleshoot maybe, see what's happening. So if I do a molecule login and specify the rel8 instance, 
We can see now I've got a shell into this um, into this container, and I can go, for example, and look at my index.html and see, yep, it created that file molecule. Is great, that looks good. So it gives us that immediate feedback where I can write this role if something goes wrong. You know what's gone wrong. You know I can I can shell into this into this this instance and 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 make sure that you know that things working and troubleshoot things. So so really really is a useful development environment here for writing my Ansible roles. Okay, so we've um, written our role now. So so the next thing I want to do is is just make sure I'm following some best practices here. So let's run our molecule lint um, stage. So this is going to use, because I told it to use Ansible lint, it's going to run Ansible lint and it's going to see if we're following best practices. And we can see here straight away it's come back with a, a number of warnings, four failures. So we can see here the risky file permissions um, uh, check has failed because when I'm writing out that index.html, I'm not specifying who owns the file, what the permission should be. So I've left it kind of to the defaults. It's not a best practice. I can go ahead and, and change that and say, OK, let's fix that then. So the, uh, the, the, the permissions on the file should be 0644. The owner should be Apache mm -hmm. and the group should be Apache. And now if I was to rerun my lint, molecule lint, we should hopefully have cleared up that error. Um, and we can see now we've only got four failures, uh, no warnings, and we've just got some issues with our metadata file, which, which I, I don't want to fix here. So you can see their molecule lint, really, uh, really um, a simple thing. And I think we can use, and like we, we're calling Ansible lint under the cover. So if I run Ansible lint, um, minus capital L, it's going to lint, list all of those Ansible lint rules. So you can see here all of the things that Ansible lint does out of the box to check, you know, permissions, you know, whether we're using package latest or installed, a whole bunch of checks there that we're running as part of uh, Ansible lint. And like I say, you can extend this and, and, and write your own rules. And now the final thing I just want to do here is, uh, you know, I've written this role, I want to actually do some kind of unit testing in it. So I, I say I've created a web server. It might be worth me just checking, can I actually get to that web server? And that's what the verify stage does. So let's just test our, let's create a simple thing to test our website. I'm going to use the um, the URI module, which will, will make a basic check to my, my web page. And I'm going to stick in that it should go to each of my instances and validate that the website's up. So this is basically going to do a, 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 a get against the uh, instances to make sure Apache is running. Now this is a, a really basic thing, right? So you, you might want to check that the right content's coming back. You might want to do a whole bunch of other tests, but you know you get the general idea here. So if I if I run an Ansible molecule, uh, sorry, a molecule verify, what this should do is run that basic test. So it should make use of the URI module to go and validate that my site's up and running. And we can see it's come back okay, and everything's looking good. And just to prove the point, if I was to chuck in a, a bogus port at the end of this, like 8080, our molecule verify should come back with a, with a failure to say that it's not looking good. So there we go, so we've got an error here and the, the verify stage has failed. So what I love about this is that I can use all I'm doing is writing Ansible here. So, you know, if I'm writing my own, um, using the delegated driver and spinning up stuff on VMware, I'm just writing Ansible to do that. If I'm writing unit tests and validations, I'm just using Ansible to do that. So I don't have to break out into other languages to, 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 to do this stuff. And so hopefully that gives you a good kind of whistle stop uh, of, of Molecule. The last thing I would say um, is, the molecule test stage which we've not run yet and, and we, we won't run that at this point so you can see here the test stage is running a kind of full suite of tests so it runs lint destroys any exi existing instances creates new ones runs your role against them checks item potent checks all of this stuff so the the molecule test is going to be really useful for us when we get into the next stage which is our ci testing so i'm just going to tear down my instances 
we'll move on to the next stage. So let me just present this. So we've, we've gone through these molecule phases here, and hopefully that all made sense. We, we, we're using molecule to spin up test infrastructure. In, in our instance here, we were spinning up test rail seven and eight container images. Like I say, could be VMs, could, could, be, could be something else. So we've used molecule here to, to basically create us a development environment, but also validate, you know, are we following best practices? Is our role wide and potent? You know, a whole bunch of good stuff baked in here. And we touched on this test phase, which we haven't run yet, which is a full suite of testing. And I mentioned that's, that's useful for CI because it's gonna run through this full suite of testing and validate what we're, we're committing. And so what that might look like when we bake that into our CI process is something like this where I'm committing or, or you know exactly what triggers it will, will vary. But in my instance, I'm gonna commit um, a change to a branch. So I don't wanna make any changes to my production branch directly. That should be protected, but I'm gonna branch my repository I'm going to commit a change to it and then because I'm using GitLab for all this, GitLab runner and GitLab CI is going to pick up the fact that there's a change there. It's going to invoke my molecule testing. It's going to run my test against my infrastructure. Like I said, that's my rel 7 and 8 um, container image. And it's going to post back the results of my test. So, you know, did it pass or fail? And then as, as an optional thing at the end here, which is, which, you know, is kind of the Galaxy, Ansible Galaxy thing is at the end of it, you might want to tag your version or your, your release to say, look, it's version 1.0, 1.1, you know, wh whatever, to say, look, I've incremented the version of this. Because you, you ideally want to pull specific versions of roles when you start to consume them. And again, this is kind of the Ansible Galaxy way of doing things where you have specific versions of roles. So let's have a look at what we've got here then. So what I have is, is the exact same Apache role we just wrote there and, and tested. I've got that in my GitLab repo here. So I've got an Apache GitLab repo. And if we go and look at the actual tasks for this role, exactly the same as what we had before. Install Apache, start and enable it, and write out our index.html. And if we go and look at our molecule um, definition, it's exactly the same again. So we've got our, our rel8 uh, instance, our rel7 instance. No, no changes here from what we've just done from the command line, absolutely no changes. Now what we have done here is, and this is this will vary depending on what CI platform you're using, because I'm using GitLab CI, I've included my CI file here, and you'll need to do something similar depending on whether it's Jenkins or, or you know some other tool that you're using. But essentially you're gonna be um, defining the stages, the pipeline that you're gonna run. And for me, it's a simple one, one stage, I'm gonna run molecule testing. And we can see here, it's just a basic script. I'm sourcing the Python virtual environment, which has got molecule, um, uh, and Ansible and all and Ansible Lint and all that good stuff in it. And then I'm running the molecule test. So remember that's that full suite of testing uh, that we're running. The accepts here are just, you know, I don't want to run tests against change to the master branch because nothing should be happening against the master branch. It should all be going against the, the, the feature branch. And like I say, if I want to tag things, again, I might not necessarily want to run my molecule testing when I push new tags. So for me, I'm just excluding those. Again, the specifics of this may vary. Okay, so I'm in my um, Apache um, directory here. So this is the Git repository that we were just looking at. And if we look here, I'm on the on the master branch here. So let's let's create a, a feature branch here for testing this. We'll call it Tech Talk, and we'll take another look. So we're on this Tech Talk branch now. And I'm just going to make a change to the readme file here. I know that's a bit lame, but you know it doesn't matter what we commit here um, to, 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 to kind of prove this uh, uh, process. And I'll just delete a load of this gubbins here that I, I'm not interested in, and I'll just chuck my name at the bottom here. Okay, so you know we we we've we've created a change here to this repository. Not 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 an, an ideal example, but it's nice and simple. So I'm going to add that um, that file. I'm going to add my commit. Um, and let's push the uh, push the changes, and we'll push it to that branch because I'm too lazy to do that. I always do a push and then copy and paste. 
So what should happen now is according to that, that diagram we had was GitLab CI should be picking up these changes. It should be invoking our CI pipeline, which is calling molecule. A molecule should be testing this role. So if we go back here and refresh, first thing we should see is I've now got two branches. I've got my um, uh, tech talk branch and my master branch. And if I go and look at the CI CD pipelines, we should see that I've got one that's running now in progress. And if we go and look at the details of that, here's the pipeline single task to run molecule. And we should see the output of this job. So it's running running through. So like I say, we're sourcing the um, Python virtual environment. We are then invoking molecule test, which as I said, is invoking a series of or a suite of tests. So it's doing lint, it's destroying any existing instances, it's recreating them, it's running the idempotence checks, it's running the verify, and then it will destroy the instances after. So that's what our CI pipeline is, is invoking here. And we can see here it's it's running through now, it's run the converge stage, it's running the item potence check. And hopefully at the end of this, we should get a clean pass through and uh, a, a kind of green tick on our pipeline. So let's just give this a second to finish off. And here we go, so the job succeeded, that's looking good. If I go back to my pipelines here, we can see our latest one here has passed, ran 10 seconds ago. And so this is what I'm talking about now. So I could create a merge request here. I could, you know, ask someone to peer review this. And I've now got this full visibility of, you know, what changes happened? You know, did you test it? What did the test results show? Yet yeah, the test came back has passed. We ran our molecule test. This is the output of the molecule test. So I'm not expecting people to jump through hoops here to validate what I'm writing and, and testing it. I've got it all here in black and white. We can see exactly what, what, what's happened here. So, um, you know, I, I think Molecule's a really powerful tool for doing this stuff. Okay, so just recapping that then, we, we committed our changes, our CI pipeline invoked Molecule, and we tested our infrastructure and came back with our results. And then just in terms of actually consuming these role so we've written this apache role now which lives in its own git repository um, there's a directory structure that we mentioned should be used um, for playbook repositories and role repositories and so we can see here if you create a file called requirements.yaml in the roles and um, subdirectory where your playbook is it will um, you can list external roles in there basically so if we go and look at an example in that requirements.yaml file, we could have things like um, roles coming from Galaxy, we could have roles coming from Git repositories. And ideally, like I say, we want to use specific versions of roles, so you might want to tag them so you know exactly what you're pulling through here. But if you're using this structure here, Ansible Tower will read the requirements.yaml file, will find all of these roles and will automatically pull them in through for you. So this was just to close the loop here on you know, if you're writing roles and putting them in external repositories, this requirements.yaml file is the way that we can pull those roles through and consume them as part of playbooks. So let's move on to the last sort of section here, which is testing playbooks. So what we're really talking about here is, is really in a way integration testing. And if we think, um, you know, it's great with writing roles, we then need to consume those roles and we consume them in playbooks. So we're now writing playbooks. And ultimately, what's going to happen is I'm going to write a playbook and I'm going to execute that playbook. You know, for, for Ansible Automation Platform customers, that's going to be executed through Ansible Tower. So what we're now trying to work out is, do the combination of all these things, my Ansible version, this role version, other, other factors, when I put all that together, does it work when I run it from Ansible Tower? And also, there are objects that need to be defined within Ansible Tower to actually execute a job. So first I need to create that link between Ansible Tower and my source control repository where all my playbooks are. I then need things like credentials. I need to define how the playbook is gonna run, what credentials it needs to run, what parameters it might need passing, extra variables. So all of that stuff needs baking in now. And what I don't wanna do is say, look, I've written a playbook, throw it over the fence to the operations team or the Ansible Tower platform team and say, look, I've written this playbook, can you, can you make this work for me in Tower? 
I want to have responsibility for that. I want to be able to test all of that as part of my CI process. And we're really shifting left and saying, look, if you're writing a playbook, provide all the assets that that playbook needs to run from Tower. So all of the definition of how that job runs, let's bake that into the uh, into your repository and bake it into our pipeline. And so as I say, we need to create objects in Tower. We need to update projects. We might need to launch a job to test it. And the way that I'm going to do this is using Ansible. So again, I don't want to break out into another language to, to consume Ansible Tower via a, a UI, uh, via the API and, and, and have to write you know, a different language. There are already Ansible modules available. There's an AWX and an Ansible Tower collection that provide the ability to interact with Tower in exactly the same way you would if you were doing it for the UI or the API. So basically, I can write a playbook to go and talk to Ansible Tower and, and update it, create objects, create jobs, launch jobs test my playbooks. And that's exactly what I want to do. So the AWX collection is the community one. Ansible Tower is the um, supported certified collection that you get access to if you're a, a Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform customer. And so what this might look like, and we're going to take a look at a specific example, is where I've now got my playbook directory. So you can see here I've got a couple of playbooks to delete and create VMs. I've got a role requirements.yaml, which I like I say, pulls in those external roles from repositories. And then I'm laying down this dot tower config directory here, which has got all of the objects, all of the definitions for creating and launching my job when it hits Ansible Tower. So I'm taking full responsibility of how this job runs and how it's defined. And I'm doing that by basically saying, look, if it's if you pick up this dot tower config directory, execute this the stuff in there, wrap it all up into tower and and and, and configure it all for me. And so what we're looking to do now is we are looking to basically say, you know, um, run my stuff through Ansible Tower as part of my CI pipeline. So again, how you trigger this is up to you, whether it's on a commit, a merge request, whatever. But, you know, in this example here on a merge request, we're saying invoke my CI pipeline, which should call Ansible Tower. It should create the job, should, should define all of the objects that Ansible Tower needs to run my playbook, and then it should launch my job. And so again, we're, we're now saying, look, We've done our role development against our instances. The next stage now is to consume that role via a playbook and run it through Ansible Tower. And that's exactly what we're doing in this next stage here. So let's take a look in um, in GitLab again. So if I go back to, if I go to my playbook repository now, where I'm consuming this role, let's take a look at what that looks like. So I've got an Ansible Dev Tech Talk repository in GitLab with a simple playbook to deploy Apache, which is calling my Apache role. So that role we've been working on all the way through this is, is being called here in this playbook, and that's all that's in there. And if you remember, I said roles requirements.yaml is a place we can put our external roles. So that Apache role is in a separate repo. That's the link to that repo. It's of type git. And I met, remember I also said you can tag these roles and pull in specific versions of these. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly what version of this role that I'm pulling through. So that's nice and simple. We've got a playbook that consumes that Apache role. Now, as I said, when we start thinking about executing this through Ansible Tower, there's a few things we need to consider in terms of objects within Ansible Tower. So here's the Ansible Tower UI. Um, and so the first thing that Ansible Tower will need is a project, which is basically a link to... Um, into Git basically. So we can see here the project already exists here for Ansible Dev Tech Talk, which has got the mapping to the playbook repository here. So that already exists, um, but if it didn't exist, it would create it for me. That's basically what I'm saying is I need, I need to be able to create all these objects. Also note here that allow branch override is enabled, which means that I could run you know, when, when I start looking at different branches for this playbook repository, I could run it off different branches and test different versions of this playbook without affecting production. Now, the other thing that we then need to do is define the playbook execution, which is which is called a job template in Tower. So here we're saying, what does the playbook look like? What's the name of it from that repos Git repository? What credentials does it need? Do we need to enable privilege escalation? All of the flags basically that you would pass to Ansible Playbook from the command line. We need to define all of that stuff in uh, in Ansible Tower here so that we can successfully deploy. And then the final thing is, just note here, I've got a couple of AWS inventory. So I've got a dev hosts inventory and a prod hosts one. 
So I'm, I'm going out to AWS, I'm, I'm talking to the, the EC2 API, and I'm pulling in all of my hosts from a, a, AWS. And I'm basically saying if it's got a tag that says it's a, a, in a in development environment, pull it through to this dev host inventory, and if it's production, pull it through here. So now when I'm branching things and testing, I can test my playbooks against these development hosts without affecting production again. So let's just search on deploy because I think that's what the uh, job template is that I'm going to create. And if we jump back into GitLab here, we'll see I've got a .tower config directory. And as I said, I want to basically have in this repository not just the playbook, but all of the structure it needs to run from within Ansible Tower. So let's go and look at this, this file. So the first thing is a variables file, which defines everything. So the name of that project and that you, you, um, the URL to get to the, um, the GitLab project where my playbooks are, that's defined here as variables. So I can, like I say, I can provision that Ansible Tower project. And then the job template. So I'm going to create a job called deploy Apache using our deploy Apache.yaml playbook. It needs the EC2 user credential. And then other flags in here that you might want to pass, you know, all of those options we had in the job template, you know, become enabled, you know, is, is enabled privilege escalation and so on. And then what brings this all together is the tower.yaml playbook here is an Ansible playbook, which uses the Ansible tower modules to go and create all of the objects. So for example here, and I'm not going to go through line by line on this, but I'm using the AWX tower project module to create that Git project, so it's in tower. I'm then using the AWX tower project update to go and sync and pull in the latest changes. And then finally, I'm using the AWX tower job template module to go and define the job template. So what's the playbook name? What inventory should it run against? Uh, does it need privilege escalation? All of those flags I'm passing through here. And what pulls this all together is our GitLab, again, our CI file. If I go and look at our GitLab CI file, we'll see that, again, very simple, um, two stages. One is to create the job template in Tower, and the second is to launch it. So again, sourcing a virtual environment with all my Ansible bits in there, installing the awx.awx collection. I could install the ansible.tower one as well for, for, production, for production use or you know as a, as a Red Hat customer. And then I'm running my tower.yaml playbook and pulling in those variables. So all of those variables are defined with how the job should look, what credentials it needs, all of that. I'm pulling all of those variables through and running this playbook to define all of that stuff. And then the final stage there would, would be to actually execute the job, make sure it runs, make sure it commits, uh, uh, completes successfully. So let's go and look at what this, what this looks like when we execute it. So I'm in this uh, repository here I'm just going to edit, in fact, let's, let's make sure we're on a branch again, because we need to be on a branch. And I think the way this works is it will work on merge request. So let's create another branch here off our playbook repository. Um, we'll call it Tech Talk again. So I'm now on the Tech Talk branch, and I'm going to edit my deploy Apache. And I'm just going to change the description here so we've got we've got a change it doesn't doesn't really matter what it is so I've added a change there so we'll get add we'll commit that and we'll push this change up to our branch now I don't think I'm expecting anything to happen here because like I said I think I'm triggering this off a merge request so let's go in here and create a merge request. And like I say, what triggers these is really going to be up to you. But we'll create a merge request off this off this change. And we'll trigger that. And then now what this should do is it should go and create all of those objects within Ansible Tower as part of our pipeline. It should go and execute the job against our development hosts. And again, this gives us a nice warm fuzzy feeling that this playbook that I've written that's consuming those roles we created earlier does work when I execute it through Ansible Tower. So we can see here the job's running. And we've done the first stage, which was create the job templates in Ansible Tower. So if I um, go and look in Ansible Tower now, we can see here it's created the job template off a specific branch. So if I go and click on this, we can see it's on my SCM branch called Tech Talk that we just created. 
So it's defined the job template with a specific tag at the end of it, off our branch, with all of the relevant parameters the ECT uses, deploy Apache.yaml playbook. And it should be executed, that job now, against our, our development hosts. So it's gone off to AWS to sync with the inventory, make sure we've got all of the latest dev hosts included. And now the job's running here through Ansible Tower. And we can see that's completed successfully against our dev hosts. So we can see the job running against our AWS dev hosts. We've installed Apache. We've started and enabled the service. We've written our index.html. So all of the same stuff we were doing earlier. But we've now automated the whole process of taking that playbook, which consumes a role, and, and making sure that it works within Ansible Tower as part of our CI pipeline. And then the last stage really is, so we, we've, we've run through this process here and we've got, a, we've got a, a, a green tick saying it's ready to merge. The last stage now is peer review that, look at the, look at the code changes, look at the, the job output. And then when I merge this into the production branch, it's going to go off and configure the production version of this. So not off my development branch anymore, off the, off the production master branch. If necessary, I could assign permission. So using Tower's RBAC, I could say, look, this bunch of users should have access to the job. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to merge this, and we should see the production version of this job appear in Tower. So uh, let's go to merge requests. And obviously, I'm doing this all as myself, which is uh, not what you would do. You would have someone, a colleague, reviewing this. But we'll merge this into our production branch. And this should kick off the next um, part of our CI CD process. So if we go look at pipelines now, we should be running something here to create the production version of this. So here we go. Here's our next job running. And like I say, we're not going to execute this job in this instance. We're just going to create the job, make it available for people to use. So we're creating the Ansible Tower job definition from the production branch. Now, remember, we had the, uh, the tech talk branch. So it says it's created the project, updated it, and created the job template. If we go back into our job templates, and if I search for deploy again, we now have the production version, which hasn't got the hyphen branch um, at the end of the name of it. So this is our production version. And we can see here the SEM branch is blank, which means it's going to pull from master by default. And we've got this job definition, which we know is saying, we know we've tested it, we know it works. So hopefully this session was useful to explain some of the tools out there like Molecule, Ansible Lint, um, how you can incorporate those into your CI testing and just generally use them for developing and testing your roles. And then also how we can take that to the next stage with um, integrating with Ansible Tower and ensuring that our playbooks will execute successfully in Tower before we publish them into production. Um, I've included some links here for getting started with Ansible, Molecule documentation, some blog posts on using Molecule and, and also using Molecule's delegated driver to automate and spin up VMware instances if that's what you need to test against. And the Git repo examples with those GitLab CI files, the tower config directory are available on gitlab.com as well. So yeah, any questions, uh, I'll happily take any.